um, again to keep the microphone off throughout the webinar. Um, the questions can be put into the chat and I will answer each of them at the end of the webinar. Let's say five to 10 minutes before um, 12.30. And you can keep your camera on if you're comfortable. If you are not comfortable, you can turn it off. It's up to you. Um, I, I see, I'm only seeing myself, so it will be great to see a uh, few faces, but no pressure. If you're not comfortable, you can remain uh, off camera. And if you are on social media, please, this is the moment to open your Instagram, your LinkedIn or Twitter and give us a follow. Um, this is where we are posting a lot of our programs, events. So give us a follow and uh, stay up to date with, uh, with the news at the Stu Clark Center. Perfect, so we will begin with uh, a quick video, just introducing ourselves to you guys. Let's talk about entrepreneurship. It's the light bulb moment from your first big idea. It's the decision to set out on a new path. It's the realization that entrepreneurship starts with a spark, and that spark starts here. At the Stu Clark Center, we're here to nurture your ideas and help spark your entrepreneurial spirit. How? How about competitive opportunities to free your inner entrepreneur? Advice from venture coaches who have walked the walk. Or some of the best networking events you'll find on campus. You'll find it all right here. By focusing on education, awareness, community, coaching, and connection, we build strong relationships with our students and do everything we can to help them on their journey to self-starting. At the Stu Clark Center, we thrive when you thrive. No idea is too big or too small. The Stu Clark Center is your one-stop shop for everything you need to start your journey. So why not start today? Perfect. Why not start today? I really love that, uh, that sentence at the end. I will shortly introduce myself. My name is Karen Bado. I am the venture coach here at the Stu Clark Center for Entrepreneurship. Um, I have been working with entrepreneurs and fempreneurs for the past few years. I have a background in accounting, uh, helping entrepreneurs and business owners with their financial strategy. I'm also an entrepreneur myself. Uh, I own and operate several businesses, and I've been here at the Stu Clark Center for, for six months, almost six months now, and, I, and I'm not alone. We have a wonderful team um, working here at the center. We have Deborah, our director, uh, Lindsay, our marketing coordinator. Uh, we have Amy, our program coordinator, and the administrator. Um, each of us is here to support you, to help you. If you have any question regarding entrepreneurship, um, it doesn't matter if you're in your journey, maybe you just have an idea, or maybe you are currently operating a business uh, we are here to answer your question. I always say that I'm not an expert, but I always love chatting, having a conversation, and, and finding ways to help you move forward with your goals. Um, you can book a meeting online using our platform. It's pretty simple. You can create your account, and everything is linked up with my calendar. And once you get that ready, I'll be able to meet with you and chat. And we also have an amazing you know, lineup of webinars. This is one of the way uh, the center try to spark the entrepreneurial idea. Uh, we do we do those through different, different um, activities and programs. So the webinars are you know, here to help you and provide you some um, guidance on specific topics. And our upcoming webinars is happening on April 6th. And we have a special guest coming for that one. Um, Jacob Kettner is an expert in SEO and matrix. So you absolutely do not want to miss that. Um, now there is such a big trend 
in, in utilizing technology to drive traffic on your website and increase sales. So if you are interested to find out how you can set up your website, how you can utilize your, your data from your social media account and understand um, this information, please register now, sign up for April's webinar. It's going to be amazing. And I'm looking forward to that one. Now let's dive into the subject, funding for startups. Um, I am an entrepreneur myself, so I, I am understanding of the importance of finding funds to be able to operate, to be able to start a business. So in this webinar, I will be covering those four points, understanding your business legal structure, understanding the legal frame, um, under which the business is operating, identifying six ways that you can uh, utilize to raise sufficient I think Sorry we're just having that. Some... I think, oh. Yes, I think I lost my uh, my network here, so I'm just gonna quickly bring okay. that. Guys, I apologize. Uh, I'm currently at the university, so this shouldn't be happening. But it's technology it happens. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Uh, if you have any difficulties, please let me know in the chat. Perfect. So I'm just going to carry on because I think everything is under control. Everyone can hear me properly. So I'm just going to keep uh, continuing with the webinar. And uh, yes, as I mentioned, you can keep the questions uh, for the end and I will be answering each question at the end. I'm quickly going to ask you if you are considering entrepreneurship the next move. Um, I'll, I'll put into the chat right now, a quick uh, survey for you to answer. Um, if you are an entrepreneur, I just wanna know because we are talking about funding and it's, it's a fun subject for entrepreneurs because they probably have a lot of questions uh, to that regard. So, perfect. So we have, we have a lot of entrepreneurs, so that's, that's interesting. And, if you are not an entrepreneur, it's still um, uh, an interesting topic to learn about. So that's perfect. Thanks again for answering. My first question will be, why do you need funding? Um, I think it's very important for um, every entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneur to ask themselves that question, why do I need funding? Do I really need funding? Um, because most of the time, depending on the industry, depending on the type of activities, some activities do not necessarily require um, a, an excessive amount of funds. And uh, when you ask yourself that question, you will be able to know if it's, if it's something that you should dive in and learn more, right? Um, usually when you start your business, that will be the, the first uh, reason why you need fund. You, some businesses already um, need a high um, amount of, of, of cost to cover, um, rent, sometimes even fund to be able to develop a prototype, um, to be able to start the business. So those are, what we call the startup cost. Um, most of the time, some businesses are not able to use the personal fund, the personal um, income to, to launch, to start the business. So usually when you start a venture, it's the time for you to start investigating and find out what your options are in terms of, of funding. Sustain a venture is the second point. Now, this is a tricky situation to be in. 
um, if you need fund to sustain your venture. Usually, we expect of a business to be profitable. So to be able to generate enough profit to function. So to pay your employees, to keep growing, to uh, you know, uh, pay yourself and, and, and have traction, momentum with that business. So if you are in a position of needing money to sustain the venture, it's already a red flag um, for your business. It means that the business is not, is not doing well. And we've noticed that with the pandemic, um, a lot of businesses, nobody was prepared to face a pandemic. So a lot of businesses actually needed um, funds to be able to operate, to be able to sustain the business and keep the business alive. Um, and then the, the third point will be to grow. Um, sometimes you haven't planned to grow, you have a little bit of profit, but it's not enough to venture into a new market, to hire uh, new employees, to bring in experts. So that's the third um, answer that will require you to, to go and look for additional funds. What you need to know before looking for funds, um, it is important to prepare yourself when you go out and ask for money, um, regardless of the different options that you have, you still have to understand uh, some important information, such as your, your, your legal structure. Uh, when you register your business, this is the moment where you need maybe to have a conversation with a lawyer or with an expert to understand how the liability aspect of the business function. So if you are a sole proprietor, you understand that you are personally liable for any debt that the business will acquire. Uh, it means that lenders or banks or investors can come after your personal asset. They can come after your house. They can come after your personal savings um, in case of bankruptcy. If you register as a partnership, it, you, are still, you and your partner are still personally liable as well. Um, now the, there is a, that option that people that we call limited liability. Usually it will allow the business to protect you know, the owners to protect partially uh, uh, their the personal asset. Uh, usually you will see businesses like um, consultant, accountant, lawyer, having a limited liability as a business structure uh, because let's say one lawyer made a big mistake. Uh, now the client is coming after the whole business, right? So having a limited liability as a structure is kind of helping preventing that to happen um, and limiting the damage. And lastly, but not the least, cooperation. Cooperation means that the business exists as, as its own entity. The business operates as its own entity. So your personal assets are not on the table when you are the corporation. Uh, it's, it gives a sense of safety, and, and comfort for the founders and for the business owners when they are um, incorporated. But it does come, it does come with the cost. Um, you have to file uh, for corporate files every year, regardless of you being in, uh, be operating or being in service, you have to pay for those fees. So you are incurring cost when the moment you become incorporated. And um, it also comes with a little bit of a complex management when it comes to accounting regulations. Uh, it's a little bit complex as well on the legal, legal aspect of the business. Uh, you require a high level of management expert. Uh, when you become public, let's say you, you are ready to, um, even, even when you are private, let's say the moment where you have investors, you have people buying shares, people investing money in your business, there's a little bit of complex, complex, complexity that comes with that. So you have to understand that when you choose that structure for your business, you have to see the whole picture and, and prepare yourself. But as you can see, there's some benefits to being incorporated. 
Um, it's also a very faster way to raise significant funds and to scale pretty quickly when you're incorporated because you have these options of um, attracting high, large amount of funds from various sources. So I usually do advise um, you know, uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, if they want to be incorporated, um, to talk to a lawyer. We have our partner at the business law clinic here at the university. They are here and they can answer any questions. You can go on the website and book a meeting. And an event. it's a great resource to just educate yourself um, with the legal fundamentals of your, of your business. The second big point that you need to ask yourself, you know, what do I need to know before I apply for, 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 for funding? You need to prepare yourself. Um, you know, just having an idea and thinking that, okay, I will meet an investor and I'll be, I'll tell them, hi, I want you to become an investor. The person will be looking at you like, why? So you need to prepare yourself. And by doing so, it means that you have to write a business plan. Now, I understand that a lot of entrepreneurs like to use the Lean Canva, but my advice is the Lean Canva should come after you take the time, you took the time to write your business plan because it's just a one pager highlighting key points that you had the time to develop in your business plan. Um, so I understand that sometimes writing a business plan can be overwhelming, but if you are looking for funds, I don't think there is another way to, to have the funds that you need. You will have to put in the effort and write a business plan. And we, I think we, we have an amazing resource here at the Stu Club Center. Um, I do provide coaching uh, in that aspect. And, help you guys write your, your business plan. But prepare yourself, start writing your business plan, start filling up your link canvas, start developing your idea and, and, and moving forward with that before even thinking of funding. People will, investors will be reluctant to invest into a potential idea. Even if they can consider potential, having a document that can back up um, the, the potential of, of that business is great. It's something that will strengthen uh, your relationship with investors. Second point will be, you have to work on your personal credit. Um, let's say you are not ready to become incorporated and you go, you know, you decide to be a solo proprietor or you are looking for, for partners, but you're still gonna remain in that frame. Um, you need to have a, a good personal credit to talk to a bank, to talk to a lender, they will be looking at that. And it also shows what type of individual you are. I remember one time um, I worked with a, with a client and the person wanted a um, hundred thousand to start a restaurant. And then when I asked the person, okay, how much do you have right now? They, they couldn't tell me what they had. Um, it's the same when, when I purchase my house, if you have to purchase your house, usually the bank will ask you to have 5% to 10% as a down payment. So um, think, think that way when you, when you think about funding. You want to be able to be the one uh, believing in your business. You want to be able to, to show that you've prepared yourself. You saved up enough. You paid your personal debt. You are ready now to receive extra support to, to, to get on the, or, or to, to get going with your business. Uh, the third point will be build the right mindset. Uh, we mentioned numerous times that being an entrepreneur is all about the mindset. Yes, get ready to be told no, because it's part of the journey. Some people will not be interested in, in what you have to say, or some people will find your business idea very weak but it's not a reason for you to give up. Um, if, you, if you've done all the, 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 you know, the, the, the exercise of writing your business plan, you took the time to have feedback from expert and you are really confident in that idea, um, then you have to develop the mindset to be um, fearless, to control your doubt, to keep trying and, and not give up or, 
even if people, investors and lenders, founders keep saying no. And the fourth point is bootstrap. Bootstrapping means that you are utilizing your own personal resource to launch your business. Uh, basically, maybe you don't need fund. You don't need external fund at this point to run your business. Maybe you can run your business on a micro level. Maybe you can start with what you have. You often hear uh, you know, coaches and, and mentors experts saying start with what you have and when you do so you gain experience to gain tangible data because you are currently operating on a micro level and you have more information I trust your business plan and, and, and keep seeking for funds uh, when you generate profit already to prove that this is a, a legitimate business and it give it gives confidence to a lender or to an investor to embark on that journey with you. So bootstrapping is always the best way when you have limited resources or when you get a lot of no's but you still believe in your idea, then you find ways to get it going and prove that this is, this is a good deal for people to consider. Now, the third point, how do I get funded? I think this is the reason why everybody's here because you want to understand how do I get the funds? How do I, uh, how can people tell me, yes, I want to invest into your business? So there's uh, different ways to do, to do that. I'll be, I'll be talking about six ways, there's probably more than six ways, a right or wrong way for you to raise funds. Sometimes it is a combination of two strategies uh, to do so. But the first po point is your personal contribution and love money. As I mentioned before, you have to show interest in your business before anybody else. You have to show that you believe in that business and you've already taken the step to make it happen. And your personal contribution shows that you are serious about your business. Um, it takes time, I understand. Um, for some people, you will have to maybe work extra, um, have a side job, uh, you know, think of ways uh, to do, do garage sales, uh, think, of, think of, you know, creative ways for you to get that cash in your hand. Um, asking for friends and family can be a little bit tricky. Um, so usually I will not advise to, to pressure your friends to believe in your idea. Your friends are not your clients. Um, they, it's family, they, they love you, they will support you, but no pressure on asking people to give you money for free. And if they do give you money, make sure um, that it, they're not expecting anything in return. Um, if they are expecting something in return, and it's more like a partnership that you will have to consider, or maybe an investment. You know, even if it's not a partnership, if they say, okay, I will lend you, I'll give you, 3,000 today, but maybe when your, your, your business becomes successful, maybe you can give me back 5,000. It's kind of a deal, but it's, it's almost as if they are lending you money. So you have to be very clear and, and careful not to damage the relationships with, that you have with your loved one. The second point is debt financing. I think this is the most um, you know, easy and well-known way to access funds. And you can do so by going to the bank. Um, usually any bank will be able to lend you a line of credit, a credit card. Some entrepreneurs or some business owners do not consider credit card as a credit. Yes, it is a credit. It is considered a uh, considered, uh, liability because you have to reimburse that money. So um, credit unions usually also have great rates. Uh, now you have microfinance organization like uh, Futurepreneur, Women Enterprise, Manitoba, um, BDC, but BDC is a little bit more like a, a big organization, it's a bank. But uh, those organizations will be working with you, um, helping you draft your business plan, um, provide you mentorship and coaching once they lend you the money because they want to see you succeed, but they also want you to be able to be paid uh, uh, the money that was lended to you. 
Uh, so those are the, 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 the few options that you can look at. If you don't require a significant amount of capital to start your business, I always say that give it a try and you don't have to be asking for 100,000. We talked about bootstrapping. So always keep in mind that maybe I'll, I'll do, I'll start with what I have. And once I gain momentum, I can keep increasing because I am showing profit. And that's interesting for any lenders to see that you are making profit. So they are also making money on the interest, right? So it's a win-win situation. The third way that you can consider is equity financing. Now, I know this is one of the most popular when it comes to entrepreneurs because most of them, most of these ideas have, have great potential to scale. So we are not looking at the venture as a business, but more like as a, you know, scalable um, idea. So there is a little bit of innovation most of the time, technology, breakthrough. So something that's not necessarily right now in the market or something that is different from what the competition has and it's already bringing interest. So you are looking in that case for large funding and you can do so with finding business partners, angel investor, venture capitalists. The difference usually with angel investors is just angel investor will be investing into already established businesses Compared to venture capitalists, they, they often are willing to take the risk. Um, they will be investing with, in businesses or entrepreneurship ventures who have like a great potential, but it doesn't mean that you can just come and sell your ideas. You still have to prove um, the venture capitalists that you can deliver. Like this is something that's gonna you know, change, revolution the way Things, is currently, things are currently being done. And then you have crowdfunding. Um, you know, last time we had crystals coming and sharing quickly on these different ways of raising funds as well. Um, crowdfunding is very popular in the art industry. Usually uh, musician or uh, artists will, will go on those platforms and, and, you know, get funds from multiple donors, multiple people, maybe in exchange of a copy, of a copy of the song or a copy of the EP. So uh, it's a great way to also uh, get the community involved, get people that have the same passion as you, or that share that the same value, or believe in the same things that you do, for example, changing the world, making the world a better place. Um, Quite founders have that. Um, relationship or emotional attachment to, to the product or the service that the entrepreneur is, is bringing on the table. So um, it's a great way to, to, to try to raise funds this way as well. And there's different platforms that you can, you can contact if you choose to do crowdfunding. Our fourth uh, way um, is revenue-based financing. We had uh, Michelle Romano sharing with us um, that this is actually the way she built a funding platform. Um, she's running away from equity because it can become a little bit tricky uh, with equity. So, sometimes it does involve a little bit of management and some investors are not interested to manage your business. They are purely investing for a return on investment. And this is a safe way as well. If you are an entrepreneur and you do not want to give up equity, but you still need um, you know, a large amount of, of funds to be able maybe to develop the prototype or to advance in your research and development, this is something that you can consider. But when we talk about revenue, we talk about profit. This can be tricky if you haven't started your business because there's no proof of profitability. So I'll say that it's a great uh, way to consider, but you will have to find a way to convince uh, the funders that you will be making revenue as soon as possible, because this is how they are getting the, the investment, the money, the return on investment, the money back. Uh, they don't want to wait for two years for you to be making money on the business. So 
and it can be tricky for you because you are paying already off your revenues. But if you have, you know, substantial cost, it doesn't matter because it's not based on your profit. It's based on the revenue. So if you're making high revenue, but on the other end, you have, um, you know, a significant amount of cost, significant amount of charge charges, then at the end of the day, you can end up being in a deficit because you have so many uh, things that you have to consider when you run your business. So those are the points that you have to think about if you decide to go for that type of fund, funding option. And we have incubator accelerators and uh, venture competitions. I'll say like those are a little bit accessible to everyone. Uh, we have Northforge, like, a, like a, our community partner, um, it's an accelerator incubator program for um, any entrepreneur that is looking uh, to start. And they have different options uh, with Northforge. Um, some of them are free. They, you, if you go on the website, you can fill out a questionnaire and they'll get back to you uh, and be able to help you. The, the, the positive, the benefit of being in an incubator is just it gives, it surrounds you with mentors and experts, and it gives a lot of credibility for investors. Usually, investors will be likely to um, dive in, like ride with you and invest into your business if they know that you've graduated from an incubator program of an accelerator program. Um, and some of these programs also at the end introduce you to investors, introduce you to venture capitalists, angel investors. So it's a very soft way for you to, uh, to make your way into that sphere and meet with potential investors. Um, and we had our venture competition um, from uh, March 10th to the 12th. And you know, this is something that I will advise you to consider, um, especially at the beginning of your journey when you need the funds. Um, we, we have like an amazing cash prize. The winner from the grad competition is actually from the University of Manitoba. He won 20 grand. Now imagine that if you need uh, that fund to, to start your business, this is free. So I will advise you to consider uh, applying you know, to the competition and in talking to us, engaging with us. Those competitions have happened across Canada, across North America. So make sure you follow us, make sure you subscribe to our e-news, to our email list, because this is how you're going to be notified of what is happening in, in, you know, in terms of competition across Canada, across North America. And if you have any interest, you can always talk to us. You can talk to me and I'll be able to um, help you if that is what you choose to um, consider for, for funding. And lastly, but not the least, grants. Um, you can raise funds through grants and it's, it's available for, for anyone. We had someone from Granted coming and share with us. Those are private grant writers. Um, you go on the platform and you fill out quickly a brief description of your business and they will pull out a list of different programs um, available for you to apply for. Um, usually when it comes to grant, you have to be connected with the business community. Uh, you have to follow the different government uh, programs, different government departments on LinkedIn. Um, I know Manitoba Chamber of Commerce also had uh, a big round of fun of grants happening uh, you know, early in March. So you have to be plugged in the community, uh, Manitoba, Chambers of Commerce, Winnipeg Chambers of Commerce, um, the different I said, um, I wrap. You have to know where the government is willing to invest and, and position yourself if, if, if that's you know where you, you think you, you'll be launching your business. If that is the industry you are considering, then you have to look out for government incentive. You have to look out of the budget. Usually they will announce the public budget. And this is where you will find out um, about the, the, the government plan for, for grants and, and apply for that. So stay connected with your community and uh, be quick because usually this type of programs, you know, they, it will appear for one week and then 
because of the volume of applications. Sometimes you have to be very quick, you have to be prepared. And we're coming back again at writing your business plan. When you have your business plan ready, you can all you can just copy and click. You don't need uh, you know two days to fill out a grant application because you already have every answers in your business plan. Okay. Perfect. So this is a quick uh, quick recap of what you know you should consider uh, before choosing the right funding option. It can be a combination of different funding options, but you have to know if you are personally liable and protect Thank yourself. You. And protect yourself. You have to understand. Um, you know, if you go for VCs, investors. You have to understand that maybe you are giving up ownership and is it something that you are prepared to do? Uh, to what extent you are prepared to do so? Um, excuse me, can someone please mute the mic um, so we can continue? Just make sure your mic is off. Sorry, off. that's probably Margaret. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was, I was uh, positive. Perfect. Uh, so the third point is agreement terms. When you have partners, it is very important to draft an agreement, a term of agreement with your, your partners. You wanna make sure that you are protecting yourself or your partners are also protecting themselves um, in case the partnership is no longer an option. You want to make sure that you have, uh, you've talked about it, you have ways to deal with, with that. So agreement terms are very, very important uh, when looking for funding. Repayment terms. When you talk to the bank, you have to be clear, you have to read through the fine prints and maybe bring that document to expert just to make sure that there's not something tricky there that will cost you or that will cost the business. Now we're gonna get into uh, debt financing um, a little bit in depth because this is usually the traditional way for uh, entrepreneurs to quickly raise funding, um, depending again on the type of business. But regardless of whether you are going for debt financing or equity um, financing, you still have to understand that when it comes to funding, there's a lot of expectations on your financial statements for the readers, for the investors. Um, there will read the plan, they will read your marketing strategy, uh, they will take a look at the, the operations, but then they will focus on the financial statement because this is where uh, the crucial information regarding uh, the numbers, the profit, this is where it lays. So you don't want to leave your financials in a, in a state of, of guess for, for, the, for the investors. You wanna make sure that you took the time um, to work on, on, on that section of, of the business or before even talking to an investor, you want to know if they're asking you what, what's the profit margin on the top of your mind, you want to be able to tell um, the investor, okay, this is my profit margin uh, without second guessing yourself. So these are, those are a few points to help you tighten your financial street, uh, statement. We had, a, we had a, a, a webinar with Crystals and, and it was a very good one. I would advise you to go back and watch. He um, talked about how you can connect your marketing strategy or your market data with your financial. How do you come up with uh, revenues? How do you come up with the number of, of, of product that you have to sell? How do you come up with uh, a break even uh, ratio? So it is very important for everything to make sense when it comes to that part. If I'm reading your business plan and I'm seeing that I'm not quite sure, you know, what's your market share? And then in the financials, I am seeing that you expect to make, you know, a million in one year, I'll be concerned about the, the accuracy of, of the financial statements. So you want to make sure that when you build your, your argument, 
everything comes together, everything is tied together with your market research, with your, your, your validation. Um, as I said, if you've interviewed 200 customers and you have 20% of these customers saying, yes, I'll buy your market. Now I'll buy your product. Now you go and uh, you look at the, the market share. You know, you can quickly make some calculations saying, okay, right now I have 20% of people who said yes. Um, so maybe I would consider that 20% minus competition because maybe the competition is already, uh, has already saturated the market. So you want to be able to develop those uh, assumption skills and make sense of, of, of your assumptions, being able to justify, uh, justify these numbers when you get asked by an investor, uh, why do you think you are going to make um, a million in three months, right? And in the marketing strategy, uh, it's, it's very important when you're talking about scaling, how do you scale? How do you go from uh, 100 to 500 the next month? What did you do to convert, um, you know, the traction into uh, actual clients, right? And it's also linked with technology. And I'm very excited for the next uh, next webinar because you will be learning all these things that is important for your marketing strategy. Metrics are important for your marketing strategy. Learning how to drive traffic is important for your marketing strategy. Uh, so all of these things you know, come together when you start building your financials so you can defend those projections. Uh, you have to consider your cost of goods sold. Are you including shipping? Um, you know, are you including, if you, if you are a service provider, are you including all the effort it takes for you to, uh, you know, deliver that service, right? So you wanna be able to, to take all of these things in consideration when you price yourself. AR and AP, uh, some businesses really uh, can struggle with their cash flow. And we've mentioned before that cash flow is one of the reasons why um, you know, businesses and entrepreneurs get turned down on the funding application. So having a, state, a cash flow statement is very important. It shows how much cash you have in hand, in hand to operate. Um, and that's very, very, very important. Uh, some of the courses, some of the charges, you don't have any other choice than to pay your, your employees. You don't have any other choice than to, uh, you know, purchase your raw material to be able to manufacture your product. So uh, if there is a high amount of outflows uh, on the front end, you can end up running, running out of cash flow on the back end if you have high account receivable meaning that you are not able to get cash from your clients. So those are the things that you want to be able to defend. Um, think about ways to um, you know, keep a positive cash flow when you do business, because as soon as you showcase deficit, it's a red flag for an investor. Now, at the beginning of, of, the, you know, of the operations, or the beginning of your fiscal year, the first year, we, we can expect a deficit because you are testing the market. Maybe your sales assumptions were not you know, quite right, but you have to be able to quickly adjust. Otherwise, an investor will not continue with you. Will not continue to read your business plan. They will just stop right there because it's not profitable for them. Um, and having a few ratios as well uh, will, will help you answer right, of, right away when someone asks you, okay, what's, what is it for me? And when you, when you watch the show, uh, Dragons Den, you can see how people are quick to answer those questions. Because as soon as you can be confident about your financials, usually investors will be turned. They, they'll, be, they'll not be uh, excited to, to work with you. Right? So those are the, the few points that you want to consider when you are doing your financials. And um, I have worked in accounting. I, I work in providing financial strategies. So if you have any questions, I will be happy to help you. This is actually uh, one of my main area of expertise, just opening up Excel, 
and working numbers with you and, and trying to find the right formula. Maybe you need to increase your pricing. Maybe you need to increase your production. How do you increase your production? What strategy are you looking at uh, to do so? So I would love to, uh, to, to hear your thoughts and uh, always feel free to, to send me an email if you have any questions uh, to that regard. Perfect, so I'm just concluding, uh, I'm just uh, concluding this webinar uh, with just those few points that we talked about today. Uh, you do not always need extra funds to start. Again, it really depends on the industry and what type of product and services your venture is about. You can sometimes bootstrap to, pro to prove that there is already profit. If you can do so, I will advise you to, to start you know, to choose that instead of thinking of having funds because it doesn't happen that easy. Even when you take an, an incubator program, it takes time. It takes time to build um, your business case and then to come to a point of readiness for, for funds. So um, this is always a good way uh, to, to start with what you have. And uh, once you decide to get funding, making profit is not an option. You have to demonstrate profit. You have to show to your partners that this is a, a good investment for them and they should jump in. Um, prepare, prepare your financials. Um, hold yourself accountable as well. If you, if you, if you get a lot of no's, it doesn't necessarily mean that people don't believe in your ideas. Maybe there's, there's a few information that you, know, you can work on. Maybe you can keep validating your market. Uh, you know, maybe you can still improve your business plan. This is valuable feedback that you need as an entrepreneur, not to give up, but to, to keep the inspiration and keep working and improving your business plan, improving your strategy or being creative with how you, you, you are handling uh, the business right now. Protect your personal asset. If you are um, a sole proprietor or a partnership, make sure that you purchase extra insurance. Insurance is also something that I think a lot of businesses don't consider until there is a lawsuit. So those are the things that you want to consider when you um, start operating or when you launch your business as soon as something becomes accessible to a client you have to protect yourself in case something happened we don't want anything to happen but it happens so you want to make sure that you protect yourself um yeah think outside of the box to raise to raise money uh, partnerships sponsorships uh, fundraiser um, you can there's different ways uh, the sky is the limit i often say that uh, be creative with, with your ideas and uh, you'll probably be able to get some traction and momentum going. Stay connected. There's a lot of networking events. Um, you know, there's, there's, as I mentioned, North Forge right now, there's lab to market, lab to market happening. So um, those are great resources uh, for, for, for any student at the University of Manitoba uh, my tax, those are great, great support that are here to help you push your idea, bring your idea to market, bring your idea to life. So please uh, tap into those uh, resources, ask, make some connections on LinkedIn, um, have conversation with people in the government. We will talk about following them on LinkedIn. Be aware of what's happening in the community. That, that's your number one uh, you know, positive way for you to, to tap into grants and any program that can benefit uh, your advancement as an entrepreneur. And perfect your pitch. It takes practice. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the lab to market uh, pitch because they'll be practicing. Practice, practice, practice makes it better. Usually a pitch will be 60 seconds to two minutes. And it takes practice for you to be confident, to talk about the key point that an investor would like to hear um, and, and having that passion, having that opportunity uh, to sell your business, to sell your idea to a potential investor. You will have to keep practicing that. And uh, this is my, my, uh, the end 
but I'll start taking questions. Um, again, you can put your questions in the chat. I will be reading the questions and uh, yeah, uh, let's go. Okay, so I'm just gonna go up just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Keep sending your question in the chat. And, uh... Corinne, the first question was, what is this lender plan before the business plan? Sorry, I can I, I didn't hear that. What is this lender plan? before the business plan? What is the lender plan before the business plan? I'm not quite sure I'm understanding the question. What is this thing? Uh, no, that was a, yeah, that was a question from Margaret. Uh, hi, thank you very much for this webinar as always. Um, so when you were talking about um, coming up with our business plans, you had said before you even get started on your, ben on your uh, business plan, have an idea of it sounded like you were saying a lender plan but i couldn't really make out the word okay maybe you know i speak french so sometimes i have um my french accent can twist word but i it's maybe beautiful. i meant <laughs> thank you so maybe i meant to prepare yourself uh before um you know thinking about funding i talked about the lean canva versus writing a business this plan was it this like was the word yes the lean, lean. canva okay okay perfect yes so the lean canva is a one pager uh, that is highlighting the key point uh, developed in your business plan so you will have like a section saying problems another section saying solution key matrix cost analysis so it, it's really an easy uh, way for you to have a big overview of your business in one pager. So you don't have to go and sort through the pages of your 50 business plan pages. Um, if you have a, a link in by just a one pager that um, have all the information on hand, but I do advise to write a full business plan because the financial on its own can take up to three pages uh, just to come up with the right formula that you can now um, you know, briefly highlight your numbers using the link in back end. Beautiful. Then, so before, before say I made an appointment with yourself, um, would I be able to uh, get a, a uh, could you just maybe spell this word for me, Len Canva? A, a, okay, I'll just type it. Type it Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, c'est bon. Lean canvas. Thank you, Lindsay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I have another question. Um, what, if, what if I did not save up a lot to launch, to launch my uh, business? How can I still ask for funding? I think that's a good question. And I think that's where I will be asking you to bootstrap. Uh, or even talk to, uh, uh, we talked about micro financing organization. Usually they'll be able to work with you. Uh, they'll be able to uh, provide you mentorship and coaching and, and help you access a certain amount to, to be able to launch your business. So um, this, it doesn't cost anything to have a conversation with um, someone at Futurepreneur and, and having, knowing, about the different options that you have. Um, so that's what I will answer for that one. What does the format of the business plan consist of? So the business plan usually starts with an executive summary, uh, market research, and then operations, and then your financial projections. So usually the executive summary is written at the end. It's about two pages. Uh, now the market, the marketing section of the business plan is where it can be a little bit intense because this is where you're doing your market research. You are getting um, information from the industry, um, market share, competition. You have to do your SWOT analysis in that section. You have to come up with a competitive advantage. 
um, validate your market. So usually the market marketing section of your business plan will be the biggest one uh, because there's a lot of research that you have to put in to, to, to undergo to be able to, to have that ready. And uh, operations as well. Do you need any license uh, to be able to operate? Um, location. So operation can be a little bit heavy, but at that stage, it's really about picking up your phone, going on the website of the city of Winnipeg West website has an, an amazing resource called BizPath, BizPath, and that's where you're getting the list of permit required uh, for you, depending on the type of business. Okay, so who do we go to if we need funding to do research to start the base of any startup? For example, I do want to bring a new product in an industry before developing the business plan. Okay, so if you, if you are a student at the university, uh, I would advise you maybe to, uh, I know here in University of Manitoba, um, I'm hearing a lot of students, PhD students, you know, who are completing research, but are thinking about monetizing the research, applying through my tax. So maybe it's something that you should consider if you are doing some research and you are also thinking about uh, making a business out of it. Um, if it's more into computer science, let's say you are, uh, you know, developing like a prototype or a minimal viable product, the platform, then I will advise you to talk to um, the, the science faculty. So depending on what faculty, there's probably, you know, something happening or someone you can talk to that can point you to the right direction uh, in that, to that. I hope I've answered your question. Um, Okay, my biggest fear is someone taking my idea and run away with it. Okay, um, I think I, we talked about um, trade secret with um, Sylvia from TDS. And she, she, did she did recommend to, you know, have maybe something in place and discuss this information if you are, sitting down with investors, you want them maybe to sign a, confi a confidentiality agreement, um, just to make sure that everything is confidential before you going ahead and disclosing uh, you know, too much information. I mean, it really, it's really up to you to give enough without giving too much if you are pitching an idea to an investor. Mm -hmm. But uh, bring out the point, if you have to talk to someone or if, you, if you're talking about something, just say, uh, would you be comfortable signing a, a, confi a confidentiality agreement uh, before I go ahead and, and proceed? And uh, yeah, let, hopefully you'll be able to, to do so and protect yourself. It's a, if it's a very um, technical breakthrough uh, type of idea, but if it's already, you know, it's not a, a breakthrough technology it's 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 maybe a, a repetition of an existing model um i wouldn't worry much about about that uh does two clock center have any tax clinic for university students i'm not sure about the tax clinic but i know that we have the business law clinic um i think when it comes to Taxation, it, it really depends. Uh, it, it can be very complex. Um, so I can definitely look, like I can look for some information for University of Manitoba and get back to you on that one. Okay. I think I've answered all the questions. Um, Perfect. Uh, it's 12.32 and uh, we are going to conclude for today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us.
Um, again, the webinar is recorded. It will be posted online for you to review. And uh, have a great afternoon. And don't forget to sign up for uh, the next one that we have. We have a special guest coming, an expert in SEO uh, and, and metrics. So register for that one. And uh, any question you may have, I'm available. Feel free to book a meeting with me. And